Welcome to our Portuguese Table Podcast. I'm Maria Lott, and these are in Green Bean. And I'm Angela Samoz, and we're just two chicks dishing about Portuguese food, culture, and what it means to be Portuguese. So grab a glass of vinho or um copo de café and join us as we talk about our favorite foods, reminisce about growing up Portuguese, and interview some of our community's most successful chefs and food writers. So, so sit down, down at our Portuguese, Portuguese table. table. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Our Portuguese Table. Maria, how are you, my dear? Oh, bom dia. I am bom fine. Dia. Yes, good, yes. Good. Have you recovered from your trip to California? Oh, my God. I'm still daydreaming of it. I just loved it there. I, I mm -hmm. loved, I wish we, we weren't as far away from each other. I truly do. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It just makes me want to go back uh, more often. That's all. Yeah, wow. well, we would probably get in more trouble if we lived closer <laughs> together. <laughs> well, I am super excited about our guest today. We have yes. Lisa Furtado with us. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. No, yeah. we're so thrilled to have you. And in fact, so we've had, so I know you're originally from Canada, and we've had um, a Canadian guest before, but you're our first international guest. So I'm quite okay. excited about that. Yeah. Um, so why don't you give a little inter introduction about yourself, because you're kind of a serial entrepreneur, and now you're living in Portugal, and you've got your own yoga studio, but there's been quite a journey there. So tell us a little yes. bit about your background. Yes. Sure. So my parents are from the Azores, and I was I'm first generation Canadian, and I spent 14 years living in Asia and had a couple of businesses there and learned a lot. And then after I went after my dream, I've always wanted to live in Portugal. So I've been living in Portugal for the last three years. I have my own yoga school here and uh, I'm a writer as well. Wow. You, you yeah. are uh, all over the place there. That's awesome. You're, you're like a renaissance person. <laughs> I just follow my heart. That's all I do. You know, that's, that's half the battle. Now, when you said your parents are from the Azores, where are they from? Yes. Hon? They are from Ponta Garza, very small village uh, in San Miguel. Yeah. Now, have yes. you been there? Oh, my goodness. I've been going back there since I was five years old. I would go with my family. My family would go travel there since I was, you know, every two years, every year going back nice. to make contact with our roots. And I was just there in San Miguel a couple of weeks ago for a, a, a beautiful wedding of my cousins. Oh, oh cool. how wonderful. Did you make it to the white party in Punta Delgada? Were you there for that? No, I no. I guess there I was missed this, it. I, I saw, I mean, not to, to off track here, but this August, the weekend of August 5th and 6th, or that weekend there in Punta Delgada, they had a white party. Oh, neat. So they pretty much draped, and I mean, it was gorgeous, and I didn't even, I know that they have different white parties in different parts of Europe and all that. Yeah, but, they have um, them here as well. In yeah, the Algarve. Just beautiful. So I thought maybe you had that chance to do that too. Now, <laughs> when your parents um, moved to Canada, where in Canada, hon? Um, so I was born in Vancouver Island in Victoria. Oh, nice. Uh, my, my dad uh, moved over there in the 1960s because his father passed away when he was only, you know, 15 years old. And so they just... One by one, uh, immigrated to Canada for a better life. Mm, that's wonderful. And, and and in Canada, and so you're there in Canada, and what made you decide to go, I'm going to go to Asia now. I'm going to live in Asia. I can always remember being fascinated with travel. It seemed the more exotic the country, the more I wanted to find out more about it. I was heading towards law school and university and I received a job offer and I went to a counseling appointment because I was so confused. I didn't know if I should, you know, do, um, keep going with you know, school. What people, or, yeah. people do normally just get a yeah. job and work hard <laughs> and graduate from university and all that stuff. And the counselor said, um, law school will always be here for you. Go travel. Right. Yeah. And so I just went for it. I just 
sold everything and borrowed the money to be able to make a go out of my new life in Taiwan. Wow. So kudos to that counselor, because I feel like so many, I mean, I, I've had counselors in school, but they are much more conservative in their advice. So kudos to that counselor for encouraging you. Yeah. Yeah. And, I don't, I'm yeah, yeah, really cool. And so what, uh, what, what did you do? I mean, you said you started a couple of businesses and um, so yeah. Maria, Maria and I talk about starting businesses here in the U S which is hard enough. What mm. is it like to start a business in Taiwan? Yeah. Um, Taiwan is a very exciting place to learn about business and um, life is much more affordable there. People are starting businesses Everyone has a small business, really. I think it's one one in three people have their own business in Taiwan. Oh, really? So, you know, inspiration and the means and the support groups to start a business were all around me. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. So I started a wedding dress business just from my own passion of creation, creating things. I saw my two aunts make um, wedding dresses and they tailored the clothing for us when we were kids. And so I had an opportunity to um, start a custom made wedding dress business. And so I just went for it. And this was in Taiwan. That's right. And eventually it began to grow and I caught the eye of um, a family-run business, a, a, a factory that um, made clothing, and they approached me to be their their um, Western American, um, you know, European yeah. and North American sales rep. Okay, so now all right, let me just put this in perspective here. So you're in Canada, you're thinking you're going to go to law school, um, <laughs> you, get a, you get a job opportunity, and granted, I don't think you studied, you know, design, fabric, or whatever, that kind of no, thing, but you get this, 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 somehow the universe opened up in Taiwan for you to go out there and work on of all things wedding gowns something yes, you've, exactly. you've never done before no just a little you know inkling of a passion when i was a child that i loved design and i loved uh fashion wow okay and then so while you're there <laughs> you have now a company that approaches you and says hey we like yeah. what you're doing yeah uh i i had to really seriously consider that offer. I went to a lawyer, I went to business consultants and, you know, saw mm -hmm. if I could do this. And essentially uh, I decided just to be on my own because I think it's best to be independent. I think yep. it's best to keep things simple. So I stopped. I, I actually stopped everything because I went through a great, um, evolution, I guess, within myself. And I realized that my true passion lies in self-improvement, uh, yoga, meditation, and uh, breathing techniques and helping people in the health and wellness field. Oh, wow. Now, where, where did that come from? Where did, where did that? Uh, again, it came from something that started within me. I started um, getting arthritic pain, which runs in my family, and uh, depression, obes obesity, sorry, I yeah. was using food to, you know, escape and to deal with other things. So I started just little by little, um, started with meditation because quite a large Buddhist monastery was just 20 minutes away from my house. And this monastery holds the Buddha relic. There's only three in the world. And I would go over there to attend silent retreats and learning how to meditate. And it really did change my life. But I was still overweight and I still had arthritic pain. But um, I learned that yoga can cure these things. And so that's why I 
started seriously practicing yoga was to heal myself essentially without drugs, without doctors, just through my own body. Wow. That that's incredibly amazing. And I know that. Oh yeah. And chronic, um, the doctor said that I had chronic asthma and miraculously that disappeared as well with the deeper I went with yoga and meditation. Wow. I'm going to say I'm now I'm going to share something and Mm -hmm. I know we're talking, we're talking about you right now, but I, I feel like I need to share this now when um, I lost both of my parents Mm -hmm. and when I lost both of them within short periods of time of each other, I went through a, a very dark part in my life. It was, it was very, um, sad. I was depressed. I missed them terribly. And I, um, yeah, I, I had a very hard time with it, with dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And my way of dealing with it was in, in the same way that, you know, I just, I just had a hard time. And I spoke to someone who had told me that I needed to do yoga. And mm. I had, and I had never done yoga before. It was something I had never done before. And, and I'm like, okay, you know, there's so many different types of yoga. Cause when you start looking at yoga, there's different teachings of yoga. There's different ways of doing yoga. And I'm like, you know, I need yoga 101 because I've never done it. And I did, um, Kripala yoga Mm -hmm. and it was a gentle yoga um and it dealt with just um it was a very gentle yoga i wasn't you know standing on my head or you know it wasn't heat there it was like it was just a very gentle thing and i did that for about a year and i found that as well i found that really helpful in my um in that for that moment that I was in and it really did help me and I miss it I I haven't done it in in many years but for those that are listening out there and you're thinking yoga uh, it can make a difference it Mm -hmm. can make a real difference but I never thought of it in the way that you're saying now which was in also healing yourself not only through the mind but also physical absolutely there's the mechanisms of the body that you can trigger to release you know for example serotonin in the body that floods the system with that feel-good natural chemical that we all have to you know ease anxiety or relieve depression and things like this and when you practice it on a regular basis it starts to just have uh, a long lasting effect. And wow. so I'm I'm curious how the popularity of yoga in Portugal has evolved because mm, I, I don't know that much. yeah cuz and I have to say we've seen over the last few years a lot more I want to say self help but more well-being and being mm-hmm. you know like whether it's yoga whether it's um you know massage uh you know, places to go get a massage or even like more veterinarians. Yeah. So people are taking mm-hmm. more, better care of their pets. So it's been yeah. interesting to see this evolution of people being more conscious of um, taking care of each other and themselves, which is funny because when we think of Portugal, we just think, well, we all are better when we're there anyway, because they eat better. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Everybody walks and it's more physical. So talk a little bit about, you know, the evolution of, of yoga and just kind of uh, a more focus on well-being in Portugal and how that's been. Oh, um, well, I can only speak about what's going on in the Algarve and the area around it. Um, there's, Um, people moving here from outside of Portugal to, um, you know, they're building uh, communities for yoga and meditation for people to gather. And so, oh, yes. Like a yoga retreat kind of place? Um, It's more like gurus, like very enlightened, enlightened beings that are opening. They've chosen Portugal 
because of um, it's just not more natural here. It's peaceful here. And um, that is having a, a, a big um, influence, I think, in southern Portugal. So, wow. are, so are a lot of your students um, Portuguese or are they from outside the country and they have now moved to Portugal? In my studio, I live in um, Pride Rocha, which, you know, we see over 3 million tourists over a span of six months wow. that come, come through here. And so most of my students are um, regulars, expats that have decided to move to Portugal, people from, say, Scotland or England, and they've made a new and they think a better life for themselves living in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So those are my, my regular students. But I also have students um, from all parts of Europe. And then I'm having a training in September that's drawing people from New Zealand, Australia, Canada, U.S., Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Israel. It's pretty something. Wow. There, Portugal is really um, attracting a lot of people from around the world when it comes to healing and wellness. Mm. Well, you're saying Portugal, I can say about the Azores because um, it, it's, it's, I think it's happening there also. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of people that are uh, coming from Canada, from the United States, from different parts, especially Germany. And mm. um, um, they're all coming in and living and moving back to, um, to the Azores. Mm -hmm. and, and as we're talking here and you're talking about how peaceful and how wonderful and all that stuff it is there in Portugal, yeah, I'm thinking you need to do something at Terra Nostra Garden, that botanical garden. Did you ever think of that? Um, oh, the one in the fruit in, in San Miguel? Yes. Is that a hotel? It is. Oh, no, I haven't. I was there, actually, um, when I was um, in San Miguel for my cousin's wedding. Um, and I went to the, you know, that amazing, it's like a uh, high, high in iron, right? The spa, yes. The natural yes. hot spring. Yes. Um, no, that, but I never, I never thought about that before, no. Well, we'll talk after because I'll make the <laughs> okay. for you. Because let me tell you. That would be amazing. Is, that park um, has, um, I don't, you just need to spend time in it. Um, mm. And it is one of the most um, amazing and peaceful places for me. Um, that it I've, is beautiful. Yeah, it is the most for me. But I've always told the people that that run the, the area that we need to have yoga done in there and they're like oh yes 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 <laughs> so we need to know. make that happen that would be, a, that would be amazing there you yes. go and Angela you're going to have to come with it too well when you film uh, season two I will Yo, go with okay. you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Lisa I don't know if you know but Maria's in the middle of filming a Portuguese cooking show so I always joke with her that you know whatever we couldn't include in the first season it's for season two <laughs> it's for season two or season three or four or whatever that's amazing. Yeah. And um, so so I'm also curious, um, also for selfish purposes, about going over and living and starting a business in Portugal. Because mm -hmm. I will tell you, if, if it we're up to Do my it. husband. Ah! Do it. <laughs> my husband wants to move like tomorrow. He, or actually tonight. If I said, hey, let's pack up our bags and jump on a yes. midnight flight, he would totally do it. So, so what has that experience been like? And, you know, what's been the best part? Wow. What have been yeah. some challenges? Um, so I moved here three seasons ago. So mm -hmm. because I only live here from April until September for the, you know, the oh, tourist okay. season. Oh, because I, I thought you lived Asia. there year round. No, because I go to India because I I work in India and Asia, other parts in Asia, doing trainings. Um, oh, okay. oh, very. Cool. What I do here is what I also do in places like Goa and Bali and Taiwan. You go to what Goa? A, oh my! Yes, God. it's amazing. <laughs> yes. I, I've always wanted to go to Goa. It's incredible. It's one of my favorite places. Uh, Goa, Macau. I want. I definitely would love to see those places. It's amazing. We would love it. 
because you're in Goa, but you, you've got Portuguese stuff all around you in Goa. Yes. Yes. Especially the food is influenced and then also um, Catholicism. Sure. And architecture. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So you're in Portugal from when to when, Lisa? So um, I started this, um, you know, three seasons ago. Um, and what's the so name of your school? What's the name of your um, yoga school? It's called Benda Lake Buddha Yoga. Okay. And we'll include and, a, a link to your website or Facebook page. Okay. Great. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I... You were asking me, Angela, uh, I think it was Angela, about the yeah. challenges and the rewards. Right. So there's been a lot of challenges. Um, you know, I'm here with my husband. And, uh, he's Canadian. So, you know, there's immigration challenges. And as far as business, I think the challenge of how to send your message out to your clients there's so many ways to send the message out and choosing what is the best one. From my experience, it always seems to be the random surprise things that get the most clients. And then when I try or spend time or money on a campaign, it seems. <laughs> so I think getting the, the message out is challenging, you know, making yes. the right decisions about that. And, and then I think the most rewarding is um, making things, being able to be creative in all aspects of business. So I enjoy creating new trainings and new courses, um, trading new, um, creating new classes, um, creating new fun experiences for my clients. And I enjoy helping people, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, um, the health and wellness field is very rewarding. Um, people make lasting changes if they're dedicated to their health. Wow. All right. Well, I'm ready to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> well, our next one is September 22nd. That one's full. But I'll, I'll take the spot. You can take the spot. <laughs> No, I can't. You know what? <laughs> September, September. I have a wedding. I have a wedding going on here. Uh, my, uh, our oldest daughter is getting married, so it's all <laughs> about the wedding all through the month of September. Yes. Yeah. But that's so much fun. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's it's it is fantastic. I I'm just I'm loving the idea of what you're able to do by following your your passion. Um, and your dream. Now, you said your husband is Canadian. Is he also Portuguese? Um, no, he's Canadian. No. He is because, Canadian. I mean, I'm Portuguese because I have my cartel to see down, but, and I have had it for several years, but um, uh, I take it back. Uh, it, does he speak Portuguese? That's what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he's learning. He's learning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's learning more Portuguese than he was learning Chinese. That's for sure. What? Well, yeah. I, it, Chinese is a very hard language to learn. <laughs> uh, right. But no, that's that's awesome. Because I was just going to say, if he isn't um, Portuguese, how is he taking to being in Portugal, in Portugal and, yeah. and all of that that comes with it? Because I have a husband who is English-Irish. And he has it because I also have my cartão and I have all of that stuff. I mean, I could live in Portugal, but my husband. What are you waiting but, for? <laughs> <laughs> but my, my, I was gonna say, but my husband, who you know, only knows really bad Portuguese words, like you oh, know, okay. it's <laughs> and it's not. Um, and it's little things. It's like, you know, baby steps. And he's he's tried many times, but he has a difficult time with um, with the language, which I, you know, I, you know, obviously I don't understand because I can speak it. Yeah, um, it's, yeah, it certainly helps. It's an immersion thing, you know, because yeah. the husband's reading the labels on mm. everything. You know, at a restaurant, he's reading the menu in Portuguese and kind of asking me, oh, what does this mean? Or for walking down the street and he'll go, oh, what's this word? 
you know, so yeah, I think it's important to be immersed in the language. Yeah. Cause I mean, Maybe I mean, we start to talk in time in Portuguese. Yeah. I and mean, Angela and I way. have, Angela have talked and I have talked about this and saying, you know, God willing, it, it, we would love to, you know, retire or live out some of our years in Portugal. I mean, yes. that is, that is it's our way possible, especially right now, because Portugal is doing very, very well. Um, and there's so many opportunities for entrepreneurs. Yeah. It, I actually found, I found it a lot easier being an entrepreneur in Portugal than I do did in Taiwan, even really? though I had more support, I had more support in Taiwan, but because here, another challenge is you feel quite isolated. You know, I'm in a niche market. And so I don't know anyone else that does what I do. So I can't really ask them. I can't ask anyone about, you know, certain questions about the business. I have to make these mistakes by myself. So, okay. um, but um, being an entrepreneur in Portugal is, is a lot easier, I think. And Angela, did you yeah. hear that? Yes, I know, I know. But, you know, so I'm curious, too, because there have been a lot of um, articles written about Lisbon and Porto in particular, but the whole tech boom and a lot of entrepreneurs in the tech field. But you don't hear about, well, I guess you hear about restaurants and such, but you don't hear really about a lot of other businesses. So uh, how have, I guess, the has the attention uh, that Portugal has gotten around these areas of, like, new restaurants, new tech, other new businesses? Do you think that's helped, um, you know, a thing it make, made it easier for you to open a business in Portugal or, you know, there can, I know there's not a niche resources absolutely. for like yoga, but um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The popularity of Portugal right now as the destination, you know, I read somewhere oh, on CNN, actually, it was on CNN um, that Lisbon has taken over most desirable uh Tourist destination, uh, it beat out Berlin, which Berlin was the top place to go for a long time. Very trendy right. place to go visit. And now Lisbon is, you know, top place now. And mm-hmm. and um, the government just released a statement saying that this was the best that Portugal has ever done economically in, I think, 10 years. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sur- it soared as far as popularity, um, not only as a travel destination, but for business as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's rated um, one of the best places for expats to live in Portugal. Right. right. Um, so, ch- just changing gears slightly, but staying on the topic of Portugal. So, we always ask some of our guests, yeah, we have to ask some food questions because, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> you know, we're, sp- we're all, sitting, we're <laughs> all sitting around, we're all sitting around our this Portuguese table, right? And there's always yes. food on the table. <laughs> there is always food on the table. Of course, lots and um, lots of it. So, uh, um, growing up, what, what is your first, this is a Maria question, what's your first <laughs> food memory? Um, I think it was probably on a first visit to Portugal in my grandmother's garden, uh, picking fruit. It was figs Aww. or guava and, and biting into the fruit and being like, wow, this is amazing taste, amazing. you know, <laughs> you know, and yeah, yeah, different than what I had in Canada. So I think that is very clear. Yeah. 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 Things do just taste. They just taste amazing. So different. Like I feel like the fruits are more more vibrant. Even the eggs have a different color and have oh, a better yes. flavor. Oh my god, okay. yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what would be if you were to go home to visit your family in Canada, do you have your mom make you a special dish? Like what's your favorite dish that she makes you? Um well, my mom is an incredible cook. She's so good. Um and she's in desserts and so mm. I'd ask her to make masa but I'm scared to ask her to make masa because it's like a two day affair and I wouldn't want to put her through all that trouble <laughs> <laughs> you know and then um, kejadish like mm. you know kejadish de feijal or, um, oh my god she has a recipe for kejadish de feijal yes my mom is so good at making kejadish could she share that recipe with me <laughs> because let me tell you, 
That is, it is one of the best held secrets is que j'adore te Angela, you saw it firsthand. Yeah, Anytime I know. Like, I've had these amazing que j'adore te I'll say, oh, can I, can I have the recipe for this? And everyone has told me no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll have to go visit my mom in her house and maybe she'll give it to you. I'm not sure. <laughs> she's kind of unpredictable. She's given me a lot of recipes, but she's not given me the quejadas de feijão, and she hasn't given me the masa recipe yet. So, hmm, there's something that really mm -hmm. well, the <laughs> masa the masa recipe. I'll have to say this, Lisa. You have to make it with her and write it down because <laughs> that is the way to do it. That's a great idea. Yes. I, okay. I swear to God, because anytime someone tells you, you do this, 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 when you actually for making sweet bread like that, it is such a process that it's a look, a feel. It's mm. not just following directions. So that Absolutely. one is definite uh, make with her and write it down. I'm really um, happy that you're telling me this information because I had no idea it's that secret. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm for sure trying to wake up at five o'clock in the morning so I can be there when she's making them. Because I've never seen her make any of those desserts, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing, too. Yeah. You know, trust me. I mean, this is, this is the whole reason why I, I wrote my cookbook. And that was because, you know, I wanted to share these um, recipes with my, with my daughters and have them. Absolutely. I, I, I didn't important. want it to go away. And, mm -hmm. uh, but my mom, my mom never wrote anything down. Mm. So, you know, it's a type of thing where it is so important. If your mom is still with, uh, with you, I mean, that mm -hmm. you make those dishes with her. I'm going to um, have lots of opportunity because I'm visiting her for three months in the winter. So with my dad. Oh, that is beautiful. We expect, we expect Angela, we expect a follow-up interview <laughs> so we can get Lisa's take on these recipes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious myself about how she's going to react when I ask her. Oh, about the recipes. I, well, yeah. And then ask her if she wants to be on a cooking show because Maria, I think you should go cook with Lisa's mom. <laughs> You season know, two. what's funny oh, is uh, season two, I have said I want to go back to Canada. Yeah. I, oh, we really? were, yeah, because there's such a large Portuguese community in Canada. That's true. Uh, there's and, you know, be some good gems there. Oh, there is. The last time when I was up there, you know, I basically I stayed in Toronto. And, and the people that I met, and were just the sweetest. And they are just so proud of being Portuguese and carrying on the traditions. And yep. it, yeah, I definitely want to go back up there. So, you that know, would be amazing. Angela, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, and one of um, one of our future guests, we usually don't say who we're going to be interviewing, but there's a store in Toronto called Saudade Toronto or Saudade yes. Toronto. And um, so they're going to be a guest on our show, you know, Probably like I, um, later this year. But yeah. so yeah, yeah. there's a lot to be, lot to do and lot to see up there. Oh, definitely. <coughs> definitely. But I have not been to Vancouver. I have not been to Vancouver. So, hey, is hey, there a large, know. I know exactly. And now there is a large population up in Vancouver, correct? Um, there's pockets. I believe, okay. uh, I just know for Victoria, there's approximately a thousand Portuguese people between yeah. 700 and a thousand Portuguese people living in the surrounding area of Victoria. Now, let me ask you something. Now we always talk about, you know, where we come from and it's genetically in us. I mean, it, we just can't help it. Um, because you were talking before about, you know, traveling and wanting to see the world. Well, you know, it's that genetic discoverer's gene that we all have, mm. you know, in being mm -hmm. Portuguese. I think we're, we're gifted with that gene, but from your, your mom and your dad, I mean, do you see yourself? I mean, obviously they're, what do they think of all of what you're doing? What do they, what do they say to you, hon? 
oh my goodness, I've never thought about that before. And I've never asked them that question. Um, mm. I think they're proud of the fact that I can have these colorful experiences and work all over the world and I'm successful at what I do. I think they know that it came from they are because they have a strong work ethic. Yep. Um, it's part of being Portuguese. Um, you know, so many people just tell me, oh, wow, you work so hard. Um, how do you get the energy? And I just say, it's fun. What I'm doing <laughs> is fun. I have no right to say I'm tired because I know how much my parents sacrificed. You know, they lived in a house with no running water, no electricity, the toilets, a hole in the the garden, you know, um, and I feel um, very blessed because it's a result of my parents' sacrifice. The reason why I have such a um, a colorful life, a very good life, and it's because of them, because mm -hmm. I've witnessed what they've done, so that me and my brother and my sister can can have a better life in Canada or the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And do you see, is your, um, because I know, I always say I am my father's daughter, but I, I'm, a, I'm also my mom's. I mean, I am a little bit of both. Um, do you see your parents in you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, well, that's not true because um, I think I see myself more in like, um, um, say my my uh, grandfather who was uh, a fruit vendor that went from door to door like he did door to door sales trying to sell fruit yeah. and you know these kinds of stories and I can kind of feel like some resonance to those kind of really hardcore stories um, that come from you know the 1950s 1940s um, I feel like I have that uh, determination within me that just mm. never quits. Whereas, I don't know. I think my parents are just so close to me that I've, uh, I have a hard time seeing myself in them. And never, no one ever says that I'm like my dad or like my mom. It's never like that. It's more like, oh, you're like your brother or, oh, you're like, my, you know, the sister, your sister, blah, blah, blah. It's more like that. So. You know what? I've never met your parents, but I have a funny feeling you take after them. <laughs> oh, really? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I'm curious about more, though, is like, you know, because you have, uh, you know, you're a very worldly person and you've embarked on so many adventures. And, um, you know, some people might say, oh, Portuguese parents, they were so, they're so conservative and they might mm. have said, well, don't go, don't go, don't go. Uh -huh. but it sounds like it sounds like your parents were pretty supportive Absolutely. And kind of Absolutely. Let you let you spread your wings, which, you know, that's I, I don't know if that's very non Portuguese or not, but uh, you know, I think that's um, there's something to be said for that. And absolutely, you know, yeah. It seems uh, I've always had that. Yeah, I've always had that. You know, um, when I was a child, deciding that I wanted to sell colored pet rocks on, you know, the. <laughs> street corner and color them by myself my father and my mom thought it was the coolest thing ever they're like go oh, child sell these rocks you'll do great you know <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah I've been well, but you know what but that's the encouragement you need when you are a child when you are yeah. you, you need that encouragement from those that are around you because if you have that from the beginning of saying you know don't ever give up uh, mm, that's, totally. that's in us. I'm sorry. That's in us. And uh, I mean, we come from, again, I, I'm going to go on my salt box again. We come from amazing people genetically. So yes. we, we carry those genes within us and, and it's like just exploding. Like we've got to do these things. So we yeah. never give up. And, you know, we always have this conversation. I was always called um, Timosa. Uh, you know, which mm, means stubborn, you. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, and I, I don't, that's a negative being called stubborn, but for all I am or for what we are, and I know the three of us are all Timozish in some people's <laughs> eyes, 
But you know what? We're we're determined. We Absolutely. will not give up. And yeah, let's there is some around that word to Moza, make it a good word instead. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was called that, but I don't take that as negative. I change yeah. that into a positive because you need to, be, you need to have that, um, that tenacity in us to be able to keep going, to keep forward, set the fence, always ahead, always look yeah. ahead. You know, well, that's just like um, Beyonce started the hashtag bossy. Or something mm. like that to, to change the perception that if you're a, a bossy girl and because don't be so bossy, but it's like, no, you have to be strong mm. and, you know, and that means you have natural leadership qualities, right? So maybe we could start yes. hashtag, hashtag Timoza <laughs> and, <just>, and <laughs> I change love it. the meaning, I love it. you know, why not? Why not? Yeah, absolutely. We can wear that as a badge of honor. I think so. It's, you know, <laughs> that is... You know, it, great. It, you need to have that that in you, and um, and and it is. And I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you're going to be with your mom and dad for three months. Mm-hmm. Because I'm have, very looking forward to it. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a funny. I see them. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be cooking a lot with them, and you're going to be sitting down with them and asking them some questions. Absolutely. I, yeah, yeah that I usually see I see them every Christmas, but um, this time I wanted to spend, you know, more time to just hang out mm. for m- more than just, you know, two weeks or whatever, 10 days. I have a question. Have you ever done yoga with your parents or like your mom? Because yes, I, and, the, and the reason I, I ask is because I keep trying to convince my mom to do it because I think that they, yes. my parents could My benefit. mom loves it. Yeah, yes, it's, oh, it's awesome. in one of the first times that I did a class with her. Uh, my father started like kind of like making comments about her body, and it was just this weird flirting thing. And then <laughs> um, my mom just my mom burst out in a, like such a joyful laughter that I've never heard her like just release like so happy before and it was just amazing to see that like they were actually flirting and they've been together for 45 years you know? oh i love it i love it love it love it it was like it was really cool to see my mom laugh like that oh that's great no that's a great experience so yeah no so i have to work harder to get my mom my parents to do yoga just now, start small what what type of yoga do you do? Because there is so many different types of yoga. Yes, I I go to the source. So every year I go to India and I study Ashtanga Vinyasa, um, which they say a hundred plus types of yoga is derived from this this style of yoga, and and it's from Mysore in southern India. So I go there every year with students. I go there to deepen my studies as well. And yeah, my te- one of my teachers, he's 92 years old and he still wow. teaches four classes a day. Yeah, he still teaches. He's amazing. His name's BNS Iyengar. Wow. How wonderful to have a teacher at 92 years old. Mm-hmm. Very That's inspirational. Amazing. That is inspirational. Yeah, his his family have tried to get him in, you know, the suburbs to have a comfortable retirement, but he refuses. He is he has a little house in the city and he walks to the yoga school, his yoga school every day four times and he doesn't advertise. It's just whoever shows up, he teaches. It, it could be one person that shows up and he still teaches. Um, wow. but he does have students from all over the world. Wow. That's wonderful. Well, maybe, maybe in what, 60 years or whatever, we'll find you in the Algarve at age 92, <laughs> still teaching. I wouldn't be surprised. If that that would be amazing. So, <laughs> so what is next for you? I mean, I know that you're, you've been there for three years and you're, you've got your, your, your school, but any plans for the mm. immediate future? Any, anything new? Yeah. I'm, um, I'm working on a yoga book uh, for beginners. Oh, cool. Oh, beautiful. So that should be released 
probably early 2018. With video, right? I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yes. Yes. And yeah. then. No, it, it will be. It will be. <laughs> um, yeah, I am building a new website just specifically for this book. So I hope to do some videos, instructional videos that go along with the book. Beautiful. Yeah. That'd be great. And you can make an app. Oh, yeah. I, you know, uh, since you've got the videos, that would be great. The Indian restaurant just opened next door and the the Bollywood music's very loud right now. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the moment, okay. folks. We're we're interviewing Lisa, but Lisa's in Portugal in a cafe. So if you hear any noises in the background, that's that's what's going on, yeah. folks. Well, and and Maria and I are, are just we're jealous because we wish we were in the cafe in Portugal yes. with Lisa. That would be great. <laughs> you know, we had the last time I saw Angela, we did a podcast live together. And we were in the same table doing the interview and, and talking and all of that. And that was an amazing time we had. So mm -hmm. we need to make sure we, we've got to find some more um, like on location podcasting, Angela. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and well. we could go see Lisa in sure. the Algarve. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the I'm middle of the so if you ever come here, you have no excuse. You have to come visit me in my yoga school. Yes, I love it. And uh, and so besides the yoga book and video and possible app that you'll be doing uh, in in the future here, what else, honey? What else is going on? What is your plan? Um, what is your what is your next thing after that? Um, I also have planned to do um the um, the trainings that I do, um, they're quite intensive. They're 200 hour trainings, usually done within three. No, sorry. This is a, this is a 300 hour training in three weeks. And so I have a group of students and we all go through this process of learning yoga and meditation, philosophy, um, Ayurvedic, Indian, traditional medicine, and, so it's going to be a movie about what we do in the 300 hour trainings. And also it's going to be a story about my teacher, one that I told you about, BNS Iyengar, who's 92, because he's one of the teachers for the training. So you'll be filming for this movie um, and, and putting it together to show everyone what you're doing, correct? Exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. And have you you already set up where you've got your production company, all of that stuff, all all lined up? Yes. Um, when I was in Taiwan, I met a very talented videographer, and he's in Toronto. He's a that's his job in Toronto. So I told him about the project, my idea, and uh, he's very excited about it. And he wants to do a short, like a documentary style. Oh, I love it. Movie. And um, yeah, focusing on what people go through. It's it's quite a transformational journey. It's very emotional sometimes, but it's very rewarding. Um, what people go through when they, they do tra yoga training in India, in Mysore. Wow. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope a lot of people do. No, I, I think that well, that... That's wonderful. Well, what thank I you love, so much. Yeah, no, what I love is just um, your entrepreneurial spirit. It's like there's constantly something going on. You've got the next project in mind. It's like never stopping, right? I just I love that because uh, Maria, Maria and I talk about that a lot. How we're always coming up with the next idea, and there's the only challenge is there's not enough time to do it all, <laughs> you know, or you have to like be patient and like do kind of do one thing at a time. Right. But yes, um, it's true. No, I just, I love that you're, you're constantly, um, you know, inventing and life. creating. Uh, and, uh, yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, I mean, how, you know, I think it's a gift to be able to make a living and be in a creative life. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. There are so many people who are so creative and have mm. always been told you can't make a living being creative. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that bothers me like you wouldn't believe. 
You know, mm-hmm, it is it is the people that are so creative that need to not listen to those that say you can't do it, you can't make it, and just Absolutely. live that creative life mm-hmm. and um and manifest it, make it happen. Absolutely. And it, it will, and it does, uh, because there's plenty of people out there that just don't see anything. They don't see anything beyond their foot, a foot in either direction. That's everyone all has talents and gifts, and people right. have probably hidden. People that are listening probably have hidden um, talents that they have within themselves, within their own bodies that they haven't mm-hmm. even realized, and so they should follow what is their calling what what is it that you know time just flies when they're doing it and just do that every day and something will happen from that from that little passion oh absolutely yeah there's certainly something to be said to being open right and true and paying attention and you know trusting your gut and not squashing down the no, no, I shouldn't do that. No, no, I shouldn't do that. I should, you know, follow the standard path and the expected path. And, but, but, uh, being open and, and like you said, following your passion and what makes you happy, right? It might start as a hobby, but then, you know, the more you do it, the happier you are. And then before you know it, it will become your life. Right. What I was going to say was um, the heart is more intelligent than the brain. So if you follow your heart, it can put you in some amazing, beautiful places yes. compared to if you just were logical and, you know, analyzing everything, worrying about things, planning for the future, those kind of things um, can set you up for disaster, actually. Yeah. Well, well, I I'm so happy that because for those that out there are listening, this was the third time we tried to speak to Lisa. <laughs> you know, the first time. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, we've we've had little hiccups. Let's call it little hiccups, okay. and I kept, and we kept saying, "Well, the next time we'll do it. The next time." And then another hiccup happened, and you know, it, and I said, "Well, you know what? It just." It's gonna. It's meant to be. We're supposed to talk to Lisa. I had no doubt in my mind that we were going to talk to you, Lisa, and and um and that we were able to spend this time together is really wonderful because I know how busy you are, and for you making the time to do this and sitting down and you know and just letting people know on um, who'll be listening to this, you know what is out there, what's available, what how your dream came true and you're living your dream, which is an amazing thing. And we, we all kind of search for things that um, inspire us and you're definitely uh, a very inspiring person. So this has been wonderful. This has just been wonderful. Thank you very much. Great. I'm proud of you guys too. Oh, thanks Lisa. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Keep up the, uh, keep up the awesome work and uh, keep up the good work. Absolutely. The next time we are in, oh, oh God, I'll be signing up for one of your classes. And, Yay! And, that would be great. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I'm still a, a novice when it comes to yoga, but I do want to get more and more into it. But, My favorite uh, students it, are beginners. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you get to mold us. You get to like, you know, <laughs> yeah, see our love for yoga blossom. Well, you know, right. and I'm and I'm I'm really I'm not kidding about doing. You should be doing some classes at Taha Nostra. I I really Ooh, I, I, I think we, I idea. think we need to make that happen, Lisa. Let's do I it. I really do. Okay, let's do it. Sure. All yeah, right, next summer. It. <laughs> All right, you heard it here, folks. We're doing it. Okay, we're taking <laughs> names, so please contact us if you'd like a yoga retreat in Ta Nostra. Yes. Yeah. Oh my signups. God! Oh my God! That'd be fantastic. And I, oh my, uh, this—it's thirty acres. The park is thirty acres. Oh what, wow! What you see there is like very little to what the park really has. Oh and wow! There, I didn't there know. are okay. some amazing parts in that park. And that park is in the in the crater. It is in the center of a volcanic crater. So the mm. energy in that crater is beyond anything. 
and mm. to have a yoga classes, a retreat there, I think would be the most amazing thing ever. Okay. I have, I can't even say no to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it is, it, it is palpable. The energy is palpable. It's amazing. I love it. All right. Awesome. We're making All it right, happen. Well, you well, heard it here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, on, on that note, we have uh, gone just, uh, I think we're either at the hour or just just a little beyond an hour. So we've got to wrap this up, ladies. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we we oh, always go right. way, way longer than uh, we always anticipate. But uh, it was great to hear your story, Lisa. And uh, like I said, we are Thank so proud you of you. Thank you and, very much. And keep it up. And keep us posted on like your book and video and all the great stuff that you're doing. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time. So is she one cool chick or what? I, I just, she's so down to earth. I just love her. She is a real cool chick. And <laughs> I would love it if one day I could do yoga with her. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. The thought of doing yoga with her. In Terra Nostra, in Furnas, blows my mind away. So yeah. I, I hope that that can work out in 2018. <laughs> well, I, I've already put it on my list. So when we go to Portugal, we make a list of things that we want to do, like places we haven't been in Portugal yet. So yeah. going down to the Algarve and taking a couple of her, her classes on the beach, no less, if you have followed Oh, my God. Yeah. She does a lot of her, her courses on the beach. Um that's definitely going to happen for sure. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't wait. I, I, that'll be our goal. One of the goals for 2018 is yeah. doing yoga with, uh, with her. That would be amazing. Yeah. Well, and the, you know, the other thing that I found so inspirational about her story is how many times have we said, oh, gosh, I wish I could just pick up everything and go or go live in another country or go do this and be adventurous. And yeah. she has, right. And so she did it. When you meet someone like that, it is, it's inspiring to like, you know, why am I holding myself back? And I should just go do it, you know? Yeah. So I hope yeah. that, that that message of inspiration reached yeah. our listeners as well. Because she's yes. just really, really cool. Yes. I love her. She, she inspired us. So I hope that all of you out there, it also inspired you to to be your best, to be the best yeah. that you can be. That, yeah. that, would, be, uh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. 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 So, so with one. that, another one in the books. Even though yes. we, uh, you know, we're a little we're a little late in getting this one out, but it's all right. Um, it's, it's okay. She's still it's doing okay. great work, and and we're still happy to to help promote her stuff. Um, so everybody out there, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being supportive know, of us, supportive and spending your time. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and share this podcast with friends and family and. Definitely leave us a review on iTunes. And uh, until next time, até a próxima. Até a próxima. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks again for listening to our Portuguese Table podcast. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so on SoundCloud or iTunes. And all episodes can be found on our website at www.ourportuguesetable.com. You can also reach us at feedback at ourportuguesetable.com with comments, questions, or suggestions. Até, Até a próxima! próxima.